When an organ becomes available, you will receive a phone call from the um, Buckeye care team, and they are coordinators that are invested in getting in touch with you as soon as possible, as soon as we know that we have an organ for you. This is a picture that you see here on the right of a real liver. We're going to tell you not to eat or drink anything. We're going to come directly to the transplant unit, which is on Blake 6. You're going to bring a list of your medications because we want to make sure that we have an accurate list. It's important to bring your glucometer if you have diabetes so that we make sure that your blood testing is, um, is accurately documented. Please bring important phone numbers. Bring a copy of your advanced directors or living will or healthcare proxy if you haven't given it to us in the past. Do not bring any valuables. You won't need them here. The transplant surgeon goes and recovers the organ for transplant. However, the transplant could get canceled if the organ is not of a good quality. Many people ask us, how do we not know this before we call them in? Some of our patients come from nine hours away. And what we want to explain and to make sure you understand is that we are looking at much information about the potential donor liver online, on computers. We're looking at imaging studies, we're looking at their history, we're looking at lab work, we're looking at lots of information about them. Many times everything looks great, however when our transplant surgeon goes to recover the organ, things do not look as good as we had hoped. And we certainly do not want this to happen, but at times we have to come back and tell you that this organ is not suitable and unfortunately you were discharged home without a liver transplant. However, on the positive note, we want you to know that you've been called in once for a transplant and we're hoping that next call comes very soon. In this, during the surgery for a liver transplant, we're removing, as we mentioned earlier, your entire liver and also your gallbladder and place a new liver in there. Surgery times may vary, but it could take six to eight hours, it could take four hours. So it's very difficult to predict how long a transplant will take, but that's the average time. After the operating room, you will go to the intensive care unit, and depending on how ill you have been prior to your surgery, you may only be in there for one to two days. You will have the following things placed, and note that these will be done under anesthesia, so you will not be aware of them, but we want you to know that these happen. You have a breathing tube inserted, you have a catheter placed in your bladder so that we can monitor your urine output throughout the entire procedure and for several days later. You have a nasal gastric tube to prevent any vomiting, which you would be unaware of under anesthesia. And oftentimes that tube may come out even before you've woken up. Intravenous catheters are placed usually in your neck area or in your chest, and this allows us to give you IV medications, it allows us to give you fluid, it allows us to give you blood products if needed. You may have a bile drainage tube in place, and that would be in the bottom uh, right-hand corner. You see this gentleman on the lower screen has had a liver transplant. He has a fairly large-looking incision, and underneath that incision is a white bandage, which is a drain. And sometimes when patients have a lot of abdominal fluid, we put those drains in so that we can monitor the fluid that's coming out and also monitor some of the uh, drainages coming from, for, for example, your bile ducts. The incision that you see may look a lot larger than you may think. However, keep in mind when we're going into your abdomen to look at your liver, we're not just looking at your liver, we're looking at your kidneys and we're looking at your intestinal tract, your pancreas. Everything there should look as normal as we think it is. You will have a dressing on your abdomen over the incision for a varied amount of time and pain from the incision. You will be medicated appropriately. These are potential risks and complications from a liver transplant. We put lots of different risks and complications in there, some of which you may think are very minute. However, it's very important that you're advised as to things that could happen after a liver transplant that can't always be predicted. We certainly know people have pain. We know patients can have to go back to the operating room for bleeding episodes or exploratory episodes if we're not quite sure that the liver is working as well as we had hoped. There can be times when bile ducts can leak and there is some leakage coming within the abdomen that we need to fix. The strictures are looked at. There's a possibility of bleeding after a liver transplant and the need for blood transfusion. There could, there could be a blood clot that could be formed in your leg, in your abdomen, and we want to make sure that that is cleaned out well if that's the case. Patients sometimes have irregular heart rates. They could have a wound infection. You could have an infection and rejection. And I want to talk about the rejection for just a minute because many people feel very fearful about that word.
However, we know the word rejection does not mean that you're necessarily going to lose your organ function. What it means is that your immune system is kicking back in. And it could mean that your body is recognizing this new organ as not self. In other words, it hasn't been there since the day you were born. And we know that we can very quickly and pretty easily treat rejections. However, we need to be able to identify it initially. So that is why you're going to have lots of follow-up appointments, maybe more regularly than you had hoped, but usually it's weekly at the beginning because we want to be able to identify any episodes of rejection or infection. Infection is certainly something we look for and we are concerned about, but we feel that seeing you as often as we do, we should be able to identify that in an early stage. Complications could be resulting from the transplant medications you're taking. You're trading a set of medications you're taking now to a set that you're going to be taking that are totally different. Some of these medications cause side effects. Some of them cause diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. There's always a way to change around your profile. We can spread out the amount of times you're taking a medication or we can change it entirely. There's a potential for transmissible diseases. We mentioned earlier that we know a lot of information about the donor, but sometimes there's information we don't have. So that's why, that's another reason why you're being followed very carefully and why we're on the lookout for any diseases that we need to treat immediately. There is a possibility that the liver may not work. That is not certainly something we ever expect, but we know that that could happen and we are prepared to relist patients for liver transplant if the liver isn't working to our satisfaction. There are patients that have uh, died after a liver transplant. We hope that is not the case very often. However, we know that there are some patients that are extremely ill and this is their best chance for survival to undergo a liver transplant. This is information regarding um, scientific registry data. And this is something that every transplant center you visit should give you automatically. It explains to you how a liver transplant center does. In other words, our report card. What are expected outcomes like? How do patients do after a liver transplant? This is giving you information regarding liver deceased donor graft survival. That's the new liver that you have in place. The live donor graft survival, if, you're, if you have a live donor liver transplant, and the liver transplant, that's you, the potential recipient, your survival after a liver transplant. Mass general data versus what's expected in the country and the national data. And this is all information that we give out readily and it's available to you anytime. You can actually go online and look up any center across the United States for any organ and find out what their um, outcomes are like. When you are hospitalized for a liver transplant, you see a picture here of Blake 6, and that's the transplant center, or most of the time, the transplant unit where you will arrive when you're called in for a liver transplant and where you'll leave when you are uh, discharged from the hospital. A typical hospital course, post-transplant, we expect that on post-operative day number one, the day after surgery, and this is primarily geared, probably makes sense, to patients that are coming in from home, you will be out of bed to the chair as quickly as possible. The longer you're in bed, the worse it is. Advance the diet to sips of liquids if appropriate. We're decreasing the frequency of your lab work and possible removal of some lines and some tubes. After your stay in the intensive care unit, usually one to two days, you'll be transferred to Blake 6, which you see right here. Once on the transplant unit, that's where the hard work begins because your diet is being advanced, you're getting lots of education, you may have physical therapy if that's appropriate and needed, and we're increasing your mobility and your activity. The education is, the, is a very, very important part of your hospital stay and it's very important that your support person, whoever that person may be, participates in this education while you're in the hospital. This does not mean that they're staying with you in the hospital the entire time you're there, but they must be available to participate in some of the educational sessions while you're there. Normally people are in the hospital from five to ten days, but again, if someone has been critically ill and in the hospital for many weeks prior to a liver transplant, this obviously is going to be a little longer and it may be followed by a rehabilitation stay. However, the majority of patients are discharged home after a liver transplant.